In terms of bugs, this is about as bad as it gets. In case you've been living under a rock for the last 24 hours, um, the world has faced the worst cybersecurity IT outage incident in history. Billions, at least tens of millions or hundreds of millions, but probably in the space of billions of PCs were functionally bricked early this morning, Friday, July 19th. I think that's the date. Completely forgotten the date. Yeah, July 19th. Um, they were completely bricked on a Friday morning and they were bricked in such a way that it is going to be unbelievably difficult for a lot of the organizations that were affected to mitigate this incident. Let's talk a little bit about what happened with CrowdStrike and the reason why things went the way they did, the reason why things are as bad and the reason why the incident response is going to be so difficult. CrowdStrike is a global EDR company. Now, I'm going to try to stay away from a lot of the acronyms that are used within the information security industry because they can kind of get confusing. I'm going to use a lot of them interchangeably, and I don't want that to sound like I'm oversimplifying things or glossing over things. Functionally, what EDR is, is it is antivirus for enterprises or very large businesses. It functionally works about the same, despite what a lot of marketing will tell you. EDR is functionally the same as antivirus that you would see on your PC. It's a lot more advanced and it is designed for enterprises. So a lot of the advantages that you get from EDR are things like tying together the indicators across an entire network on your enterprise versus just having one endpoint. So they're designed for large businesses. CrowdStrike is one of the largest, if not probably the largest by market share EDR companies in the entire world. It's absolutely massive. Um, as kind of a disclaimer, I used to work there years ago. I have not been part of CrowdStrike for a long time. And when I'm speaking on this, I don't have any kind of internal expertise. I did not work on the EDR team. I was not a developer at the time. Um, so I'm listing this disclaimer as more of a way so that like people can't dunk on me later. I worked there, but I did not have any special knowledge and I don't have any special knowledge now. What I do have some knowledge on is the fact that I am a software developer now and I've worked in the software space and the information security space for the last several years. So I have some level of expertise in terms of like how that works. I have some level of expertise in terms of how malware works because I play around with writing it and I've mitigated a lot of malware myself. So I'm not going to call myself an expert and there have been people with far more expertise who have talked on this to include low level learning and John H Hammond. I'm going to list their videos down in the description um, because they can speak with much more expertise than I can. So what happened? Let's start from kind of the high level layman's kind of explanation of what happened. CrowdStrike shipped a software update early Friday morning um, to all of the PCs at once under their fleet. So we're talking about, like I said, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of PCs all at once. We're gonna talk about why that was a bad idea here in a bit, but they pushed this update and that update caused immediate problems on the PCs that they were installed on. And we're not talking about just individual PCs, it's those two, so individual laptops, individual desktop PCs, but it was also Windows servers. This specifically affected Windows. And for a little while, people thought that this was a Windows problem because all Windows servers and all Windows endpoints went down and they were getting what's called a blue screen of death. Now, if you're not in the IT world or you're not in the information security world, you may not know what blue screen of death is. Functionally, what it means is that there is a critical error in the operating system that causes it to crash and will not boot correctly. In terms of bugs, this is about as bad as it gets. Your PC will not boot. You will not be able to do anything with your PC. It is just functionally bricked. Your data is still there, which is a good thing, but you cannot access it. If you do not have some way to access the computer, at least physically or over a very specialized remote connection that you know is specific to enterprise environments, you're kind of screwed. And for a while there, people thought that it was a Microsoft problem and Microsoft caught a lot of heat early on. Upon further investigation though, folks started to notice that it was only CrowdStrike, uh, only PCs that CrowdStrike was installed on. So they started to kind of narrow down the problem. You could also see a kind of snippet of what was going on in the background as my dog jumps onto his spot in my office. You could see a shot of the actual system driver that was the problem, csagent.sys. What csagent.sys is a kernel level driver for CrowdStrike. So when people started looking into it more, they started realizing, well, this probably isn't a Microsoft problem. Microsoft themselves came out pretty quickly saying, this ain't us. 
CrowdStrike, to their semi-credit, fairly early on decided to own up to the problem and said that it was a kernel level update that they force pushed to PCs across the entire globe that caused the problem. Now, you can't really talk about this problem very easily without getting kind of into the technical weeds. So let's start from some of the terminology that I'm using. There's low level and there's high level. High level is all of the stuff that you kind of interact with. So we're talking about Chrome, we're talking about Internet Explorer for the three people who still use that, the File Explorer, things like that. Those are all high level things that operate in a space called user space. So whenever you act with, the, whenever you interact with the operating system, you are interacting with the high level components of the operating system. On the low level, these are all of the components of the actual operating system itself that interacts with the hardware. So you've got a whole host of low level components that make up the Windows operating system that allow you to do things like store things on disk, make interactions with network drivers and you know send things out over the internet. All of this stuff that typically you don't ever have to worry about because Windows most of the time does okay at you know doing all of those things for you. When things go bad on the low level though, it gets incredibly difficult to debug because like I said, Windows is incredibly opaque. Say what you want about Linux, there's a lot of complexity behind Linux that people don't understand, but it's fairly easy to interact with those level low level components compared to Windows, which is just a host of crap built on top of crap over the last several decades. None of it is open source. The majority of it is not open source. So it can be incredibly difficult to actually interact with a lot of these low level components. The question has been asked by a lot of software developers. Why did CrowdStrike have what is called a kernel level driver on these machines? What a kernel level driver is, is, is a very, very, very low level component that is basically inserted into the core of an operating system that allows antiviruses to do what they do. What antivirus does is they sit at the lowest possible level of the operating system in order to gain as much visibility on what's going on in the operating system as possible so that when malware lands on your system and has nowhere to hide, if your antivirus operates in the user land where you are and the malware operates in the kernel level, the malware is able to hide itself a lot easier. So all antiviruses functionally have to sit in the kernel level. There are ways technically that they could sit at the user level where if there were a bug, it would not crash your entire operating system. But at least from my understanding, if an antivirus sits just in user land and it doesn't have a kernel level component, that lower level component that interacts with the operating system, it's not going to have the same level of visibility into what's going on in your system, and it can miss a lot of malicious attacks. So what you have here is a trade-off. You have a trade-off of visibility versus the stability of your components. You basically have to have a lot of these lower level components in order to have visibility over the operating system in order to catch malicious attacks. What you're trading off there is stability. Most of the time, this is not a problem because these companies like Kaspersky, like CrowdStrike, like Mandiance, like a lot of the other antivirus vendors know that this is an incredibly unstable, very, very fragile environment. So the updates that they push out to a lot of these drivers are very, very heavily QA'd or quality assured before they go out. This is where we start to get into some of the failures on CrowdStrike's part. First off, the meme is that you don't push to production on a Friday, ever. Because what ends up happening is if you screw up, you're requiring the IT support folks, the security folks across the entire globe to clean up your mess on a weekend when they would rather be sitting on the beach, spending time with family, resting after a really hard week. When you push to prod and screw up something on a Friday, you're ruining somebody's weekend. When you screw up this bad on a global level that takes down the London Stock Exchange, that takes down flights across the entire country, you're requiring a lot of people to work over the weekend. So that's the first screw up. The second screw up I have, unfortunately, less visibility on. Um, the assumption is obviously there was a failure in quality assurance here. I personally do not understand how a system level component that is as screwed up as this one appears to be, got pushed not just to some devices, but all devices across the entirety of CrowdStrike's customer base all at once. 
what you would typically do, especially with a low level system driver like this, is trickle out updates over a smaller portion of your customer base so that if something does go wrong, it's not on critical systems and it's not across the entire country or the entire globe immediately. You trickle it out to one, two, three percent of your customers at a time. And if something goes wrong, you can roll back and avoid affecting all of the rest of your customer base. And you have a much smaller population of people to apologize to. As an aside, that's another thing that they've kind of screwed up. So far, George Kurtz, the CEO of CrowdStrike, has put out several statements on social media. No apology. Not one. A lot of very interesting use of passive voice, but no apology. That's a little weird and a failure on their part too, in my opinion. However, the big failure here is you understand that you are pushing these updates out to the most critical and the most fragile part of your customer's ecosystem. I'm assuming that in some way they force push these updates because according to all of the IT admins who have talked about this, they did not consent to these updates at all. And there's no way that every customer of CrowdStrike consented to these updates. So my assumption is there was some mechanism by which they force pushed these updates, or at least people did not have insight into when the updates went out. So you're pushing the prod on a Friday, you're doing very little QA, or at least very inadequate QA, you're pushing to all of your customers at once and you are not allowing them to consent or not consent to the updates. What this has led to is flights being grounded. This has led to the London Stock Exchange having issues. This has led to blue screens of death on Sky News. This has led to blue screens of death at Macy's on Times Square. I mean, we are talking the biggest IT outage in history occurred early on a Friday morning. It's very, very difficult to overstate how bad this is. And one of the reasons why it's so bad is that the mitigation for this requires physical access to the server in order to boot Windows into safe mode and delete system level kernel drivers on the PCs themselves. Now, that sounds like a pain in the ass if you have one endpoint to do this on. Imagine instances where you have a data center full of servers that you have to do this to. We're talking thousands of servers that you're having to do this to. We're talking about globally distributed remote workforces that you have to do this for. People have to ship in their PCs now in order to get their IT support to be able to reboot their systems. Most of the time, this cannot be done remotely. There was a tweet that went out that talked about a lot of 911 dispatchers being affected by this, like ones in like Alaska. I'd venture to bet that 911 dispatchers in Alaska probably don't have a very large IT support budget, so they're just completely shit out of luck. Like you literally just can't call 911 in a lot of these places, or if you do, they're not going to answer. I don't think it's an over-exaggeration to say that there is a good possibility that somebody may have died as a result of not being able to get in contact with 911 in these instances. I mean, it, it is that serious. We're talking about trillions of dollars worth of damages here. And we're talking about an incident that there will absolutely be legal repercussions for. You know, there's no way that you can't escape this problem, which is why CrowdStrike stock price has plummeted over the last 24 hours. So what can we learn from this? One, don't push to prod on a Friday. Two, be very, very kind to your IT support folks, especially those who are in cybersecurity or cybersecurity adjacent or might be responsible for mitigating some of this crap. They are going to be working the entire weekend and probably most of the next week on this singular problem, not to mention their entire backlog that they've already got going on. I don't really know what comes of this. There have been a lot of folks who have criticized the fact that a lot of these in similar softwares, you know, have to interact with the kernel at this low level that causes this kind of instability. There have even been a lot of fair critiques of Microsoft specifically having their operating system set up in such a way that a third party kernel driver can cause an entire OS crash like this. Those are probably fair critiques. At the end of the day, it's very unclear what's going to come of this. It's very unclear if anything's going to come of this. But what is very, very clear is that the system that we depend on is much more fragile than we would like to believe. We would like to believe that everything runs on web and that everything on the web can be fixed very quickly and that any kind of outage is going to be fairly sparse and fairly incon uh, inconsequential. That doesn't seem to be the case. In cases like these where our entire 
critical infrastructure runs on a lot of fairly fragile components that can be affected by third party outages like this, you have to start thinking about mitigations that are outside of just, okay, well, we've got to fix this technical problem. We've got to start talking about the systems that are in place. When we're talking about an outage that's caused by a software bug like this, this is not a problem caused by a singular engineer at CrowdStrike. This is not a problem that is caused by a team of engineers at CrowdStrike. This is a problem that is caused by a culture at CrowdStrike, by a lot of PMs at CrowdStrike, by a lot of management at CrowdStrike, and by a general culture across, I guess, the cybersecurity space of being way too flippant about a lot of the approaches that we have to cybersecurity, a lot of the approaches that we have to critical infrastructure. If your 911 dispatch can go down because somebody decided to push the prod on a Friday, that's a bit of a problem. And that's a problem that is completely outside of CrowdStrike's hands, frankly. The blame needs to reside on them. The response needs to reside on everybody. And I guess that's the lesson that I'm taking from this. It's like midnight right now. I thought that since this is kind of the hot topic right now, I would kind of put in my two cents. Um, it's going to be a long weekend for a lot of people. Buy a coffee, buy a beer, give somebody a hug. And acknowledge, like John Hammond said in one of his videos, there are people on the other end of this, even people at CrowdStrike, who deserve a ton of empathy and a ton of hug support from the rest of the community, whether you be a software developer or a cybersecurity practitioner or just a random person. If you see somebody who looks very, very tired and has a laptop in their hands, give them a hug or at least a high five or something. That's about it. Take it easy. Peace.